Aquarius, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you. No particular subject, we're gonna do, we're gonna take an issue, something we know, something we don't know. Recent past advice and potential outcome. At the end, there'll be an opportunity for extending where we'll dive in deeper. You can, sorry, I thought one's flipped over there, but I don't think it has. Uh, you can watch this for uh, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node. Ooh, truth, Ace of Swords. Um, <clears throat> Or if any of those planets are currently transiting your 11th house. All the information is in the description box. Um, Crosswatch is more than welcome. Thank you for all the support. You know the drill. Thank you, guys. Um, happy birthday to those that were the last, since I've last spoke to you. <clears throat> I know we've left Aquarius season now. We've moved into Pisces today. Uh, however, the focus is still energetically with you guys. Pluto, Venus, Mars, Mercury, all... Um, you know, sitting uh, heavily in your energy. So you are still the main show, don't say that to Pisces, shh, at the moment, energy-wise. So let's, uh, let's do two more. Okay, guys, Aquarius, what's going on? We have the Page of Swords. The Page of Swords is the, the researcher, it's, Getting curious. I almost feel like something's awoken in you. That Ace of Swords was trying to jump, jump earlier. And this ace, uh, this sword that the page is holding here. It's almost... I feel like something's activated. Hmm. What do we know? Oh, I know what's going on. What don't we know? Wow. Recent past... Okay, yeah, advice. Interesting. And potential outcome, wow. Okay, you, amazing. Four of Swords, Queen of Cups, King of Cups, Ten of Cups, Magician and the Star. Magician and the Star um, <clears throat> is Mercury and then you guys, so Mercury and Aquarius, which is the Six of Swords. I believe you're in a transition. You're on some sort of journey here. Um, I will look for the Six of Swords. Okay. Sorry, it's just something I would be checking later. I just wanted to get an insight of it. Okay. <laughs> Another thing I'll be checking later. <laughs> right. Where are we? Six of Swords. Okay, the Six of Swords is with the High Priestess and the King of Swords. And there you go, that Ace of Swords straight afterwards. So the High Priestess and the King of Swords is somebody that is very intuitive but articulate as well. Someone that can bring down divine knowledge and maybe teach others or just put it in layman's terms. Um, this could be, I don't know, it could be light language where you hear what to standard people would be gibberish but you can you can translate it it doesn't have to be something like that but there's something here that is you there's a significant that shift that's taking place in your life at the moment now page of swords what we're aware of is the six of pentacles the six of pentacles is an energy of reciprocity it's an energy exchange and i believe something has triggered within you I don't know whether this is you to others or somebody's done this to you. It doesn't have to be another person as well. This can be geographical locations, but it feels like something has awoken within you. This could be dormant spiritual gifts. This could be uh, dormant DNA awakening. Something has, has activated gifts from past lives. What we're not aware of is the emperor. This means that you are gonna stand and be noticed. Uh, don't get caught up in genders, but you're heir, so you would naturally be the energy of the emperor rather than the empress. It doesn't have to be um, based on um, gender. Or this could be just suggesting that you step up in, into some sort of leadership. You know, we're, we're stepping into the age of Aquarius. It's the age of you guys. We're coming away from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. And here we go. Stand up. Be counted. Recent past, we have the two of wands. 
the two of wands for me is somebody that has possibly come into your environment and triggered some gifts there is souls on this planet that are like that i've, I've recently come across one who just being in your energy field can activate these gifts these are very very special people this could be you you could just have that ability to trigger people uh, and i don't mean that in a negative aspect it could be because some people's um, awakening has to happen through um, chaos, dark night, that type of thing. This could be just you've already gone through that period of dark night and chaos and now it's about activating these gifts. So this could be going to a certain place, this could be meeting a certain person. Whatever this is, is happening. Two of Wands is Mars in Aries, so the Tower meets the Emperor. Tower is the trigger, Tower is that surge of energy, Tower is that activation kundalini activation it could be just an energetic burst it's very mars um so whatever it is the tower which um was one of them that i was going to look for and was interestingly with the lovers and the page of cups so there could have been a situation here this could have been a past connection um, a decision that had to be made. Uh, for some of you, you need to stop. Okay, you need to stop expecting honesty from people who lie to themselves. And sometimes that's difficult to hear, but that is something that is very, very clear here. There's somebody in your environment that lies to themselves and you cannot get through to people that lie to themselves. I, I, I don't know in what aspect that is. If, if people lie to themselves, they're not going to see the real truth of things. So don't bang your head against a brick wall expecting something to shift within another person. Okay, so moving forward. Your advice is the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands as advice is Venus in Aries. The Emperor meets the Empress. So what we're, what we're not aware of is stepping up into some sort of Emperor power, which means we need to balance that out with the feminine energy. The feminine energy is with the death card. I've noticed that Pluto and Venus have just done this conjunction, maybe highlighting those areas of power plays in relationships, or it could just be representing some sort of dynamic in terms of intensity, or perhaps as well showing shadows. That nice, the Empress. The outcome is the Three of Wands. The Sun meets the Emperor. The Emperor is stood. Something has triggered a huge shift of energy here. And I believe something has awoken. You carry ancient wisdom and you've been asked to not let it go to waste. So let's check out the sun. Sun is with the Four of Cups and Strength. Strong Leo energy here, which represents your opposite sign, um, which is rules the heart. So this is following the heart. It's also telling me something quite strange here. There's something energetically lodged at the back of the heart. So the heart chakra is two foot is twofold. There's, there's, there's the heart chakra and then there's the higher heart or the back heart. Something is is needing to be healed here. And I believe the universe is giving you plenty of opportunity to do this. There's some sort of, um, this could be niggles, this could be listening to your body, getting certain pains. Um, really pay attention to your body. If it's not flying from the heart, it, there's something not quite right, okay? I do like to see this combination though, I must admit. Because if you actually break it down, this is balance. So when I tend to feel like there's a talk of balance, we've got the sun and the moon, we've got the empress and the emperor, four of wands, we've got chariot and the strength card. Those are, those are kind of like sort of the opposite ends, but the balance, temperance and devil. And if we look here, we've got the sun wedged between strength and the moon in cancer. So the moon meets the chariot. So we've got the sun and the moon and the chariot meets the strength card. 
a lot of balanced energies here, but there's something you need to pay attention to. It's either something you're consuming or ignoring. There you go. So, interestingly, that um, Empress card is with Death and the Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords is um, Tower meets the Lovers, which is what we we found earlier when we went to see the Tower. So it's all linked with people, places, situations. This could be um, parents. This could be all sorts of different aspects. This could be based on a... Um, a past relationship this could be a feeling that somebody was supposed to be your 11 11 and in reality they were to trigger a growth within you sometimes not easy to hear but necessary chariot is with the knight of cups and the fool something wonderful is coming your way i wanted to see where the three of cups was Two of Cups is the last card. And the Three of Cups, which is what the universe is trying to get your attention with, behind with Justice and the Queen of Swords. There's something about boundaries here. There's something about um, your, it could be local environments. This could be something to do with um, the third house, networking, communications, how you communicate, how you speak. There's something about not silencing yourself for others. You know, when you um, embody and embrace living in your truth, you will you will find connection and fulfillment. So wonderful things are coming here. I almost feel like you have just awoken ancient DNA, and now it's time to not let them go to waste. Okay. You yeah. I, I was trying to work out what poem was coming through my head. Um, so it, I was slightly distracted there. Um, so there's a poem called You Ear. You Ear. Uh, I took a screenshot of it. Here we go. So it's by Donna Ashworth Words. You Ear. Imagine if the moon refused to shine because the sun was shinier. If streams ceased to flow because the rivers were flowier. If snow didn't dare to fall because rain was fallier. If planets did not glow because stars were glowier. What a world it would be if nature compared. If flowers didn't flower because their neighbours were flowerier. You, my friend, must stop all that folly. No one could be more you. You are you here. <laughs> so this is this is just embracing fully who you are. You, you've, they've, there's an activation within you. You, you are the medicine. And uh, now it's time to edit, set those wings free, three of wands. You could have Capricorn in your chart because uh, Capricorn's outcome was three of wands as well yesterday. Um, doesn't have to be though. And I'm supposed to touch up on Chiron. So Chiron is square in the North Node today, conjuncting, sorry. And I got it wrong for, I must have been out of the, away with the, um, confusion at the moment um because i think i said to capricorn sagittarius and scorpio in in the wrong house but the energy of um, of chiron is here to um and it's in your it'll be in your third house third house of, of communications friendship groups your local environment so there could be something uh chironic wound happening in this energy today and the dev um, and the um it's something that's repeated quite often so be mindful of what's happening in your local environment today transport communications siblings those type of things nine of wands chiron is with the two of pentacles the devil and the chariot and the justice two of pentacles is is the wheel of fortune meets the devil so this is something that is a repeated aspect a repeated shadow so pay attention to any wounds that come up any triggering that comes up to the surface today uh, or the next few days at least, uh, there's going to be big insight as to what needs healing. Wonderful things coming. Okay. In your extended, we're going to see what this gift that has been activated will take its energy, what we know, what we don't know. Recent past advice and potential outcome. We shall mirror this reading. Moon in Taurus, Aries, Mars in Aries, Venus in Aries, Sun in Aries, strong Aries energy. 
we have Jupiter in Libra, we have Mars in Pisces, we have Gemini in Virgo, Aquarius, Venus in Scorpio, Sun in Scorpio, Mercury in Taurus, Taurus. We have wands, we have swords, we have pentacles, and we have cups. Everyone's here, those who stand out, take care. See you soon. Bye.